Hello, ladies. Hello. Can I tell you about my Mr. Wonderful? Oh, yeah. A southern gentleman, even a counselor. Who could do better than a counselor, right? Probably five or six months into the whole relationship, he actually invited me home to meet his family. I thought, and he flew me down to meet them. I thought, wow. I got there, and uh, this family was unbelievable. They were like the Huxtables, <laughs> except that they lived on a great big farm that you could get to going up a long road that was named after the family itself. It was amazing. Suddenly, Mr. Wonderful was a little uncomfortable. I had no idea why, but I could tell he was a little antsy. He started to stutter and mess up his words. He looked itchy. I mean, everything was wrong, and I wondered what in the world. And I said, what is going on? He said, you know, I promise I'll talk to you about it by the end of the weekend. It was a little unusual you know, to give that kind of an answer, but nonetheless, I listened, and I thought, well, I'll be patient, and I'll wait. Well, he never did. The weekend ended. I returned home to the Midwest and uh, got a call about two weeks later, which was on my birthday. He called to say happy birthday and to say, ah, oh, I don't think I can date you anymore. And I'm thinking, well, this wouldn't be the first time <laughs> something like this has happened. Uh, you know, let me maintain my civility. And uh, just when I said, well, what's, what's going on? He said, well, it's just that I've always, oh, don't get me wrong. And he kept interrupting himself. Uh, you're a very nice girl, godly girl. You know, exactly who I want to introduce to my mom. Nice, nice. But it's just that I've always, always imagined myself going out with someone pretty. <gasps> Ladies, I was devastated. I had to be pretty. I wanted to be adorable to somebody. I wanted someone to feel like, oh, I'm so proud to be with her. But he said, I was ugly, and so guess what? I was ugly. And when I would look into the mirror, I saw ugly. Grotesque. Disgusting. And I couldn't get away from the ugly. I started to dim all the lights in my apartment. I took away every mirror that didn't have to be on the wall because it was nailed to the wall. And I lived like that in darkness three years. Three years. You know what finally happened? I got so tired of walking uphill, so exhausted walking uphill, carrying this heavy load of what someone said to me. Didn't matter that he was a jerk. But that's what he said to me, and therefore I was precisely what he said I was. And when I got so tired one day, the Lord gave me Psalm 139, 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. yes. And I had to claim that as the very word of God that would define me and not the words of a stupid jerk. Yeah. I would believe what God said and not what man said. Yeah. And when people walked by my apartment door, I'm sure they wondered sometimes what in the world I was doing inside. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Say it with me. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you. I'm Sherry Boykin.